that goes back to when I was a younger man. Um, during uh, the first Gulf War in 1991, uh, I was, I'm interested in the military, military history, and a lot of people and pundits were making predictions about the outcome, the manner in which the war would be um, waged and decided, as well as casualty counts and how long it would take. And basically everyone was wrong on the duration and the, uh, and the destructiveness, well, the, ca the number of casualties suffered by coalition forces. And that was interesting to me because there was one historian, I'd like to say, uh, Trevor Dupuis, who got it right. And I was uh, interested in, in how he got it right. Like, uh, and evidently, he had a system. Um, and just a few years later, um, during the uh, 1994 midterm elections, uh, when Bill Clinton lost in a landslide uh, to the Republicans, the Republicans took the, the Congress for the first time in 40 years. Um, after that defeat, basically every pundit um, on earth was saying that Bill Clinton was a one-term president. And being a staunch Democrat and a Clinton supporter, I was traumatized by that possibility and wondered whether they knew they whether they knew what they were talking about. And at about that time, I found a book written by another historian, Alan J. Lichtman, um, uh, about predicting you know who would become the next president. And evidently, he had a system where you didn't need to use polls. You just look at history. And using his method, I realized that actually Bill Clinton was in a pretty good shape. Um, his, his chances weren't guaranteed, but you know, even a year before the election, um, I had a pretty good inkling that, that he had a good chance of winning re-election, and this was um, against what all the pundits were saying. So based on those two events, there were probably other events as well. Um, that's why I became interested in forecasting. Basically, the fact that everyone you know, got thing, big things wrong, and I wanted to know why, and some people got big things right, and I wanted to know why, and whether I could do as well as, as they could. So ever since then, I, I was I started you know on my own forecasting you know the outcomes of wars and elections and with mixed results. But you know so, but you know, over 20 years. So <laughs> so that's how that's how I became interested. I don't trust my gut. So usually my first impression is right about half the time. So in order to do well in a forecasting tournament, you have to dig deeper into the sources. Um, if you're predicting elections, for example, you know, um, find out you know, what happened in the past, you know, um, uh, which parties um, were likely to win and under what circumstances. Uh, do your research about the electoral system. Uh, sometimes you know, the electoral system could lead to a counterintuitive result. You know, a party could do very well in the polls and still lose the election. So it's just really a matter of uh, doing your homework, trying to understand um, the situation, uh, the history um, behind the event, um, and, and really working hard at it. And I would say a second reason would be mm, uh, my sense of history. So I think that comes in very handy because uh, most people, when they would forecast whatever event it is, would really look to the recent past, um, draw on their own memories, as well as maybe, you know, a Google search of, of you know, the recent news events. But I think having a sense of history that stretches back far um, can give one a sense of, mm, possibilities which, you know, the recent past might not indicate. Okay, well, along with not trusting my own gut feelings, my first impressions, I don't trust the gut feelings and of experts and pundits. Uh, I try to, whenever possible, to discover, understand what assumptions underlie their forecasts. Sometimes they're explicit about this and other times they aren't. They don't really, they'll say, you know, this event is likely but not really explain. And if I keep doing my research and find other pundits who say a certain event is likely without, you know, much explanation at all, then that's a signal for me to really do some deep 
research and and try to, even if I agree with that assumption, you know, sometimes I'll just try to play the devil's advocate and say, well, let's pretend that this silly outcome that's unlikely to happen, you know, actually could happen and kind of play that out. And sometimes, you know, I'll go back to my original estimate. Yeah, that's silly. It's not going to happen. But, you know, often is the case that the silly outcome is becomes the more likely one. So that's, that's one thing um, I do. Um, another is uh, I try to discover um, or to find out, you know, who has the power in a certain situation, um, who, who is the decider in the words of George W. Bush, and that's one that keeps coming back all the time. Um, and also, you know, in every forecast you want to you know, write down a list or in your head, you know, of all the constraints that would pretend, uh, prevent a certain event from occurring um, or slow it down, you know, make an event, you know, an, a likely event take longer to occur than, you know, what was expected before. So those are just a few things. Well, one of the things I would recommend would be to write down a list of of all the things that would um, that you should be on the lookout for that might um, cause you to change your mind. So after you've done your homework, you've thought deeply about you know the event and the likelihood of of it occurring. Um, write down a list of 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 things that you know would happen leading up to um, the event, or signals, markers, whatever. Um, that would uh, cause you to change your mind. And, and I, the reason why I say write it down is because, <coughs> is because um, you know, it's very hard to, to change your mind. And if you write it down, it might be help you, uh, you know, um, not try to, to fudge things well. You know, if it's, if it's just in the back of your head, you know, it becomes a little bit more difficult to, to go against, you know, um, your original uh, original conclusion, because I mean you've put a lot of work into this, and you don't want to go back on it. And <clears throat> there's a natural tendency not to want to, you know, waffle or be too wishy-washy. But you know, having it down on paper will just show you. Well, I'm not being wishy-washy. You know, events have changed, um, uh, things have changed, and and maybe my initial uh, uh, conclusion was wrong. I would say the third thing would be to play devil's advocate. Uh, after immediately after you've you know come to a conclusion and made a forecast, seek out information that would prove you wrong. You know, um, if if anything, you know, just to uh, cover all your bases. I'd say my fourth piece of advice would be to uh, seek a, a wide variety of sources. Um, even weak and biased sources, because sometimes you can find interesting information in very flawed sources. Um, but that'll take some work on your part to determine, you know, which part of these, you know, particular reports are worth, you know, holding on to and which part should be discarded. It's not an easy task, but don't just, you know, casually disregard even, even bad sources, because you, you never know. From four years as a, as a forecaster um, in the uh, GJP tournament, I can say that uh, another piece of advice I would give is to assume that things would take longer than your initial impression. <laughs> uh, that's a rule of thumb because it, it happens consistently time and time again that whatever it is, um, a diplomatic initiative or, 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 or what have you, um, events often will take a lot longer than than what what you think you know they will take or what officials you know the timetable of of officials um, and, and and that's just been my experience from doing this for a long time um, final piece of advice would be uh, embrace uncertainty don't get too hung up on getting things correct you're never going to get everything correct you're going to get a lot of things wrong, I would focus more on um, assigning viable or um, uh, 
uh, realistic probabilities to events. Um, just think of it in terms of, you know, if I assign a 70% probability to a particular event, you know, I'm going to be wrong three out of 10 times, you know, for, so if you, if you work on being well calibrated instead of trying to get everything right, um, I think that's probably a more fruitful endeavor. I'm not sure that they have, although they probably should. Um, having practice at forecasting geopolitical events, maybe I should start practicing forecasting uh, events related to my own personal life. Maybe that would help me uh, avoid being unpleasantly surprised by, <laughs> by things. But so I'm, I'm not really sure how it's affected my personal life other than having uh, nice dinnertime conversations with families and friends.